Australian independence was not an instantaneous event. Like the other dominions of the British Empire, it was a gradual affair. To explore this topic, we have to consider how modern day Australia came to be. So without further ado, let's crack on. Following the Dutch acknowledgement of the continent in 1606, the British soon after charted their way around the Southern Pacific, eventually culminating in James Cook's recommendation for settlement in the 1770s. This opportunity was seized by the British government who, having been kicked out of North America during the American Revolution, were looking for somewhere new to send convicts. Yes, this was a time when stealing a piece of bread could get you shipped off 9,000 miles to a semi-desert. Nowadays, you need two degrees and a PhD to get into Australia. Anyways, I digress. After establishing the colony of New South Wales in 1788, the British government began gradual colonisation of Australia's exterior, a process facilitated by South East Australia's rich potential for agriculturalisation. As colonial settlement accelerated, newer colonies were created, and the first non-convict colony of South Australia was established in 1834. Other colonies soon followed. Many were granted responsible government in the 1850s, and they would go on to form the modern day Australian states. Fueled by the discovery of gold in the 1850s and 60s, economic growth soon followed, and the agricultural sector diversified into one of mining, finance, and even business. With this growth came the development of a distinct identity, one which saw itself firmly rooted in the British Empire especially as the nature of Australian settlement had diluted the ethno-linguistic characteristics of settlers. By the 1890s, Australian living standards had exceeded that of Britain, and at the time, the empire was seen as a viable economic sphere. As such, when the empire was tested during the Boer War, Australian colonies volunteered some 16,000 recruits. One recruit stated that, if an expedition to Antarctica in canoes was proposed, half our fellows would volunteer. Pretty uh, stern stuff coming from that chap. In the year 1901, the Australian colonies decided to federalise, practically forming the entity we know as modern day Australia, and the nation was granted self-government within the British Empire as a British Dominion. The early 1900s are a controversial period in Australian history. On the one hand, we see the growth of a functional democracy, and on the other, we see the development of a white Australia policy and the accelerated marginalisation of Aboriginal peoples and Asian workers. Australian politicians attempted to keep Australia firmly entrenched within the empire, and any attempts by London to liberalise trade away from the empire were met with rebuke by the Australian government at the 1907 and 1911 Imperial Conferences. Even when an Australian Royal Navy was established in 1911, it mainly pursued British interests and was, in reality, a Pacific branch of the British fleet. As with the rest of the empire, Australia was automatically taken into war in 1914 by Britain. Though the Australian response was keen and patriotic, casualties soon mounted on the Western Front, and in 1915, Australians suffered the brunt of the Gallipoli campaign, an event which forged a unique Australian identity. Thereafter, Australia took seat on the newly formed Imperial War Cabinet, Australia now had a say on how the war was being run. This marked a departure from Britain ruling the roost. Australia then showed its nationhood at the war's closure by signing the Treaty of Versailles separately to that of Britain, alongside the other British dominions. The 1920s was a weird time for Australia. Whereas Canada and South Africa were seeking imperial devolution, Australia was seeking to tie the empire together more tightly. At the 1926 Balfour Declaration, the Australian PM was in complete disagreement with the notion that Australia should be seen to be equal to that of Britain, believing that it challenged the very nature of empire. Australia was even more despondent to the passage of the Statute of Westminster in 1931, a statute which practically gave Australia full independence. It's necessary to understand that Australia was fully geared towards the notion of empire, both economically and culturally, and therefore differed from Canada and South Africa, which were bicultural societies and had begun to pursue their own economic endeavours. Yet, as we will soon see, Australia's links with Britain were not impervious. 
During World War II, Singapore was seen as the Empire's Fortress of the East and with its collapse in the February of 1942, the then Australian Prime Minister, John Curtin, withdrew Australian troops back from the Middle East towards Australia in anticipation for Japanese invasion. He even publicly declared that Australia was looking to the United States for support, a statement which saw Australia stepping out of the imperial fold. This event pitted Australian interests against British interests, and Australian interests had won. Australia was now beginning to see the world outside of the British Empire, and in doing so, it was looking for a place in this new world. After the war, although Australia was independent as a result of ratifying the Treaty of Westminster in 1942, it would give military aid to Britain during decolonisation, throughout the Malayan Emergency and the Borneo Crisis. And, as the Suez Canal was the lifeline for British trade with Australia, it would even support Britain during the embarrassing 1956 Suez Canal Crisis. However, with the UK's loss of the Suez Canal, and with the end of empire in sight, Australia began to look elsewhere for trade. Australia was almost forced by circumstance to become distinct from Britain, an anomaly when compared to the other nations of the European empires. Well folks, that's just about it for me. If you enjoyed this video, then slap a like on it. If you didn't enjoy this video, then slap a like on it. If you feel ambivalent about this video, then slap a like on it. Comment, subscribe, do all those jazzy things. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. This Bye. Video is over now. Find something else to watch or just watch this video. I know we had a lot of fun, yeah. a lot of fun. Whoa. But you can't stay on this end screen forever.